it was written all over your face You know I couldn't see It's gone from my memory There's no use in telling me It was written all over your face I don't feel like holding on Something inside is gone You're nothing good to me And it's written all over your face Strange dreams are haunting me You treat me like a refugee In the way that it should be It was written all over your face I don't wanna think about tomorrow Cause you're all too bad to see 
Thank you so much. It's a song from a fabulous band from the 80s I was involved in.
sleep for a while Then take a look
just passing The road I know So well It seems the more I ride
to think that I'm on the shelf From a seed that almost came There's no time to find the time
as I am. J.J. Marsh on the guitar over here. I've been mistreated. I've been
Bentley's cheating, and I don't know which way I'm gonna go. And I've been song called Getting Tighter.
Smith on the drums. George Nasto, Ed Roth, JJ Marsh. Here's a song from the Deep Purple catalog from Come Taste the Van. I wrote this with David Coverdale. It's called You Keep On Moving.
yeah Oh yeah Cause I gotta keep on Moving You know if you're gonna move Sometimes you're gonna go down Sometimes you gotta go real low down You gotta move it on And in the middle of a daydream You come a calling me I can see much clearer now Cause I know where I'm gonna be Cause I Cause it keeps on taking me there Cause it keeps on taking me there Moving Cause you know you take me there I gotta keep on
Glenn Hughes, uh, is, is his friendship is so important to me because he's it's such a spiritual connection to music. He's such a singer from the heart, and when he sings, it's like, it's the only way I can put it, it might sound a little gushy, but it's a connection to God listening to him sing. And for me to be involved in this DVD in any way, shape, or form is like if someone had told me 15, 20 years ago that you'd be sitting here talking and doing something with Glenn Hughes, I'd be going, get out of here, you gotta be kidding. A guy like that's not gonna be in the same room with a guy like me. Well, things turn out differently than you expect, and here I am with Glenn Hughes, the most amazing singer to ever set on stage in a rock and roll band. I met Glenn Hughes about one year ago, and um, had the f good fortune of playing with him uh, at, a, at the NAMM show. And um, I'm such a huge fan of Deep Purple. And when they asked me, they said, would you like to come and, and do uh, a few songs with Glenn Hughes? And I was, I was beside myself. I said, Glenn Hughes from Deep Purple, Glenn Hughes, that guy? I mean, you know, ah, that guy? And they were like, yeah, I'm like, oh man, he's, he's such a, uh, um, He's a legend in his own mind, he'll tell you that, but uh, he's also a legend in the music industry. And, and, and for me to be able to play with people that have made music and soul form from the heart and for the right reasons. You know, we, we, we just had a great time playing together and it feels really good. We, we really, really enjoy playing with each other and just hanging out and making music together. So um, I wish him all the best of luck. I love him and uh, I feel like I'm roasting him or toasting him or something. But uh, uh, you guys should uh, get turned on to all his music because uh, he's the real deal. All right, um, I'm here today in support of uh, my dear friend, Glenn Hughes. I had the pleasure of working with him in 1982 on the now considered called classic Hughes Thrall record. Um, there is no better singer known to me. He's uh, the greatest singer in rock, soul, pop, and genre. And uh, I'm just here to pay uh, homage and be entertained. Hi, I'm Kevin DeBro, the lead singer from Quiet Riot. And I'm Lark Williams. And before we carry on, we'd just like to say how honored and privileged we are to be here for the filming of Glenn Hughes' DVD. Glenn was such an amazing catalog of songs throughout your career, starting with Trapeze, then going to Deep Purple, and then Hughes Thrall, and about 10 years of solo records. How did you decide what songs to perform on today's DVD? Well, my heart really started out with, with Trapeze. I mean, my first real band, and, and uh, I wanted to, to have some Trapeze material on this DVD. Um, and then, of course, there's a couple of Deep Purple classics, which I felt I had to play. Um, uh, and um, the newer uh, solo material, which I'm really proud of. Uh, the whole DVD CD, it, for me, is, is a way of expressing uh, the soul of, of who I am as a songwriter and a, and a rock performer, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, and, um, and have uh, a real feeling of who Glenn Hughes is or was or going to be in the moment today. So I'm really happy with, with what we're doing today and um, I'm really, uh, really excited. There's an amazing eclectic combination of musicians with you tonight. Would you please tell us about who is playing? J.J. Marsh is, is my lead guitar player. He's been with me since 1995 um, on uh, every record I've done on every tour. Um, of course, Mr. Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers is uh, playing drums. Uh, Chad and I have become real good friends the last year, and he's played on a couple of albums with me, and um, I love working with Chad. He's possibly the finest rock drummer alive today, for me speaking. And a great guy, and uh, uh, what can you say about him? He's just amazing. Uh, George Nastos is my funk guitar player. Um, when I do other gigs outside of the rock format, George plays with me on my funky stuff. And I thought it was interesting to have him uh, on this shoot uh, and CD as um, I want to cover the rock and the funk on this particular venture. Um, Ed Roth, my keyboard player for the last couple of albums. Um, I've known Ed for about 10 years. Ed Roth for me is signifies you know, the very early 70s vibe and the very psychedelic um, Fender Rhodes, Hammond, and it, it really, it's a moment for me, it's a, it's a special thing to have him play with me on this. Uh, and I think this band is um, excellent. Uh, I wish we could do more.
Also tonight, as guest backing vocalist, I have two really good friends in Kevin Dubrow, the voice of Quiet Riot and a longtime friend and great voice and, and one of the greatest guys I know. Alex Legitwood, uh, 17 years, lead singer from Santana, who's another sweetheart of a guy and a great voice, and I'm very privileged to have both of these young gentlemen on this said shoot. Let me ask you this, Glenn. I've had the great privilege over the years of interviewing everyone from a Kevin Dubrow to a Stevie Wonder. And there's something about musicians and singers, usually you can't get them to agree on anything. But when your name is mentioned, the respect and the awe, they all agree that you're the best there is. And as a singer to myself, Glenn, I can say that when I get together with other singers, the competitiveness obviously exists, but when your name is mentioned again, we all hear you sing and we say, how did he do that? The respect is amazing. Are you aware that they feel that way about you? Honestly, I am always taken back by, I'm not really good at accepting compliments. I'm really, really humbled by the fact that other singers that I admire uh, have said these things. And um, I really am truly blown away by that. I, I, as I say before, I'm always going to be a student of the voice. Uh, I'm always going to sing. Um, I'm very lucky to have this long career and um, um, whether it's 50 people or 5,000 or 50,000 people, I'm still going to sing. I like to sing. But when other people mention me in, in, uh, in phrases like that, it, it's really, uh, it's very sweet. Um, and I really, uh, I'm kind of blown away by that. It's, it's really also nice. very heartfelt. Well, yeah, it's... Um, it's something that I say in, earlier in the interview that, that it's, a, it's, a, it's sincerely a gift that, that, that uh, I never really was trained to sing. Um, I've never had vocal lessons or a vocal coach or... Um, it's something that uh, I hear that Jeff Beck, uh, an old friend of mine, he never practices or never really warms up on stuff. So it's like, I guess, it's a natural thing for me to, to sing. So if it moves people, that's fantastic. You know. Glenn, how and why did you become a singer? I became a singer quite by accident. Um, I was in a, in a high school band and I was a guitar player before I played bass. And the lead, the lead singer of the, of the band went away with his parents on holiday. And I was nudged into singing some cover songs in a, in a band, my first band called The Intruders, when I was only 15. And um, I got sort of nudged into that. Then when he came back up holiday, I, I went back to guitar, and then, and then I, I was always sort of like a second vocalist in, in a couple of other bands. And then, of course, uh, Trapeze, where I was second vocalist in that band as well for a while, and then became a trio where I was pretty much asked to be the lead singer by Mel and Dave. And um, with, with the David Coverdale thing in Deep Purple, I was once again the singing bass player. And this is a role um, I really, really love being, uh, and I love singing with other singers. I love absolutely having the experience and the, and the uh, I'm always going to be a student of, of, of other singers and uh, I like singing with them. So having, you know, Coverdale and Hughes, that, that scenario for me was, was a really cool thing. You had so many amazing phases of your songwriting career. Is there any time in particular that's your favorite or is it the one you're in now? You know, when the world was new in trapeze in, in like 1971, 72, um, that area for me was was a very, 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 very sweet area. And it was I was learning how to become a singer and a writer and a producer. Um, and in the solo years from 91 onwards um, is when I changed my whole life and my lifestyle. Is when I pretty much found out who I am uh, and hopefully where I'm going. And th these last maybe eight records for me in, in this period are more spiritually inclined in, in, a, in a progression that I'm, I'm hopefully living and want to live. So what I'm writing currently is things that are probably more meaningful um, and probably I would want to hear more. But I, I'm not the kind of guy that, that sits at home and plays my own music because I'm always writing music, I don't have any time to, to listen to it, so um, I write pretty much every day of the year and uh, I'm, I can't stop myself from writing, so there you have it. 
You're such a great songwriter, Glenn, and songs to the songwriters, many of them are like children. Some of them grow up to be different than you expect them to be, but of all the songs you've written, one that stands out in my mind, and I know your fans as well, is the song Coast to Coast. I know from speaking to you that you had told me that you'd written it when you were much younger. Can you tell us a bit of a story about the song Coast to Coast? I remember this very, very, and I wasn't thinking about this until you mentioned it, but I wrote Coast to Coast and a track called Will Our Love End in my mother's kitchen on a wet day, midweek in, in the UK in 1971. Um, very, very young geezer I was back then. But I wrote them in the kitchen while my grandmother was making some food. And in a matter of half an hour, these songs were written and completed. Um, I know of other artists that have, have written their, you know, their, their songs like that in, in this very quickly and very spontaneously. So uh, some of my better work has been written very quickly, you know. I'm, I, I kind of write quick anyway, but those, that song was written, as long as it took to write it and play it, it just came right out, you know. And uh, it's a very, very simple song. But that, that is probably a theme song for my fans, and um, I think it's a timeless piece of music. Glenn, as an artist whose career has spanned over 30 years, music has changed a lot since you began. How do you keep your uh, artistic focus together with the changing of the music industry with like such things as boy bands, hip hop, and alternative music today? I think that every five or ten years or so, there's a different culture of, of music comes along from you know from the the rock and roll movement of the '50s into the Beatles era and the psychedelia era, into the hard rock era of Led, Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and the Who, which I come from. Uh, and then you yeah, the grunge period. The whole, what I'm trying to say is yeah, that whole process of music changes with different cultures and different generations come along. For me as a songwriter, I write music that is um, soulful, I believe, and it's very melodic. Um, and it comes really from the soul. I don't write about fantasy things like demons and witches and stuff. Uh, I, I leave that to other singers and they do it well. But for me, I write about the human condition and about what hopefully, I, I am obviously digging up some stuff here that's been happening in my, in my life or happened to me in my life or things that have happened to me years ago or what's happening currently. So I, I write about what's going on inside of me that probably has been going on inside of you or gonna happen to you. So um, it comes directly from the heart and the soul and I'm really uh, that kind of uh, writer and singer. my hometown, land of the free. City of Angels. And this is my DVD shoot. And we're going to have a good time, and I hope you enjoy it.